Hi, everybody. I'm Spencer Sutherland with Comp Health, and I'm very happy to be joined with Dr. Wilner again today. Dr. Wilner is a board certified internist, neurologist, and epilepsy specialist. And he's also the author of the book, The Locum Life, A Physician's Guide to Locum Tenants. Dr. Wilner, how's it going? Everything's great. Thanks for asking. It is so good to see you today. I hear you're going on a big vacation. A big vacation. Yes. Something I learned when I started Locum Tenens is that you can take a vacation and the world continues to go around. I didn't know that before. Well, I'm glad that you've learned that and we'll find out if that's true once you're gone. Um, when we talk about Locum Tenens and we talk to doctors, the first question is always the same. They want to know about the money. So hopefully you're up to talking about money a little bit today. Sure. Okay. So let's start with kind of the most basic question, which is how do locum tenens get paid? And what I mean by that is, are you getting paid by the hospital, by the agency? Does somebody slide an envelope full of cash underneath your hotel door? How does that how does that work out? Well, pretty much all of the above. You know, uh, one of the things about locums is it's very personal. It's very individual, and to get I can talk from my own experience that I worked on a per diem basis for a clinic that I had contracted directly with. I was paid with a check per day. I got a lump sum per day. I also worked for the Mayo Clinic in uh, Phoenix where I contracted directly with them and I was paid as an employee with a W-2. So I had an annual salary, although I had no benefits, I was paid with a W-2. And then I've also worked with staffing agencies where I was paid by the hour and would get a, a check every two weeks. And that also included uh, overtime and holidays and whether I had to go back at night. Each For each of those things, I was paid additionally. And that payment came directly from the locums company, not from the hospital. And uh, that was a 1099 for those of you interested in uh, taxes, right? W-2 is a regular wage earner and a 1099 is a self-employed individual doing contract work. And with locums, it can be either one. Yeah. So you mentioned with locums and, and with Comp Health, we, we pay you directly um, through direct deposit every, every two weeks. Um, the question for, for you is, when when you're negotiating that rate with the agency, how do you how do you address things that might affect pay, like call or overtime or weekends? Is that something that you no negotiate before you go into that assignment? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Everything has to be negotiated before you start. And one of the nice things about being a locum tenens physician is that you're in demand. Somebody wants you. And so that does give you a little bit of leverage when you're negotiating. Of course, you're not the only locum tenens physician in the world. So if you negotiate too hard, the uh, client or the staffing agency may go with, with somebody else. So you don't have uh, infinite leverage. But I have had one situation where the hot, there was a certain hourly rate. And you can kind of figure out what, you, what you're worth. You know, you can go on to... Uh, the internet and go to Medscape or MedPage today and see what a, I'm a neurologist, what's a neurologist average salary, and then uh, kind of add to that what the benefits would be and come up with a number and then figure out how many hours there are in a year and figure out, you know, what is a reasonable hourly wage and then look at what they're offering and see if that number makes sense. There's certainly no harm in saying, you know, I'd like another $30 per hour when I'm on call or something like that. And I've done that. And it, then it just depends on the client. My experience has been is that the agencies would like you to earn as much as possible in general. And uh, so I've had good cooperation with that. And the one time I did do that, I had success. So I have uh, a good experience with that. But yeah, everything is negotiable. And the other thing I liked about locums is that uh, holidays. I always kind of resented, you know, working on Christmas Day, New Year's Day, because as a physician in private practice, you know, a day's a day, doesn't matter. But when locums, it's more like you're kind of a regular employee where you get overtime, you know, time and a half. 
And uh, so I, I look forward to working on holidays because all the days of the year are pretty much the same to me. So I'd rather work on weekends and Sundays and July 4th and all of that and get, get paid extra, often for working less. You know, usually the hospital is a little slower on the, not always, but usually a little bit slower and uh, you actually get paid more. So one way to make more money in locums is to, is to go for the holidays. Yeah. So you mentioned independent contractor. And as a result of that, when you're working locums, you've got to manage your own money. Is there anything that you um, needed to adjust in your lifestyle to say, okay, um, I need to do things differently because I might not be getting, getting paid as much on this assignment as I did last month, or this next assignment may pay more than the last one. How do you kind of keep track of all of that and make sure that you're within your budget or, or what you're trying to accomplish? Right. Well, I think, I think for someone who's used to being an employee, that is a really important point because the wonderful thing about locums is the flexibility, but that also can be a downside because the client may cancel at the last minute. And that's happened to me and it's happened to other locums physicians that I know. And then that's allowed up, you know, up to 30 days before the day of the assignment cancel with no penalty. Well, you may have budgeted, you know, your income for those next six months. And the next thing you know, there's nothing. So you got to scramble to get a new assignment. So obviously, I mean, what, what most financial advisors would, would recommend is that you have six months of living expenses sitting in the bank so that uh, if, if all of a sudden you have no money, you're not going to default on your mortgage and the electric bill and uh, run out of cat food. So you do have to, I mean, I think that's the easiest thing to do is just make sure you have a, a cash reserve, but also uh, to plan on ups and downs. And uh, in my book, for example, I remember I interviewed one woman who said that that was one of the difficult things about locums is that she didn't have a steady paycheck. You know, she got a big paycheck when she worked ER, then there would be a gap, then another big paycheck. So you, you have to get used to that and just kind of factor factor that in. Well, you um, you talked about money, and, and that is the most, that's the closest thing. You know how much money you have or don't have. Sometimes we don't think about retirement planning or the things that are a little bit less visible. As an independent contractor, you've got to take care of your own retirement, your own health insurance, et cetera. Tell me how you manage or navigate those type of things as a locum. Right. So good news and bad news there. And uh, the bad news is, is that the locums company or the hospital or clinic that's paying you is not going to give you a penny towards your retirement. Uh, the good news is that as a self-employed individual, you can be both employee and employer of your own business. And as an employer, you can, can contribute money to your favorite employee, which is you. So uh, I learned that uh, I can have my, I set up my own 401k and I'm able to contribute the maximum as an employee. And then there's a formula for contributing. The employer can also contribute. So as a self-employed individual, you actually have the opportunity to contribute more to your retirement than you would as a sort of regular W-2 employee in a big uh, corporation. But you have to sequester that money so that it doesn't turn into a Tesla or a vacation house or some other expense. So, you know, that does require, I would say, more than your average uh, discipline. Well, I'm most happy to hear that you are your own favorite employee. Yes, that's true. I, I, hope that you, I hope that you have some medals on the wall, employees of the month everywhere. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to put those up right there. Put some over there by the fish tank. Um, and this seems a little bit complicated. It is. But in the end, you've still chosen to do locums on and off throughout your career. So, I mean, what's, what's the upside? What's the upside for you as you think through all of the things that come along with being an independent contractor? Well, I think uh, flexibility. I like to work when I want to work and I like to take time off. As you, as you mentioned earlier, I'm going on vacation. And uh, I think had I not done locums, I never would have realized that, you know, you can take time off. Uh, and this goes back when I was in private practice. I remember 
I took a 17 day vacation. It was the longest vacation I had ever taken. It required six months of planning because I had patients booked and it was like a big deal, you know, with the administration of my clinic. I was even an owner of the clinic, but it was still a big job. Later when I worked locums, I routinely took three months off at a time. I'd work for three to six months, take three months off, another three to six months, three months off. And as I said, the world continued to turn. So I'm actually taking a paternity leave, unpaid paternity leave, and uh, going to visit my wife's family so they can meet our new baby. And I think the world will continue and uh, hopefully we won't run out of money while we're there. And uh, that's the plan. So locums for me has been really a great uh, teacher about how to how to give you the power. And when I talk to other locums doctors, uh, when I interviewed for my book, that was it's like, even if I make less, the ability to control my schedule makes it worthwhile. But I've actually cool. made, I, just to say, I made more as a locums doctor than I ever made before also. So it really depends on the situation and how hard you wanna work, how many days you wanna work, how lucky you are in negotiating. And right now, physicians are in demand. Locum tenants physicians are really in demand and command uh, high salaries. And also, there's a lot of opportunities. So it's a, it's a great time in terms of timing to do locums. Sure. Absolutely. Well, I know you've got a lot going on. You've got a vacation to pack for. Uh, but I appreciate you taking time with us today to talk about um, locum tenants pay. You've written a blog uh, post for us on comphealth.com. And also, um, you can always find more about the locum life at andrewwilner.com. And so we hope that you have a great trip um, for all of our viewers. We hope that they'll hop over to andrewwilner.com or comphealth.com and search for compensation where they can get more of the details and more of your insight on how locum tenants works and how it benefit how it's benefited your career. Sure. That's sure. Great. All right. Thanks, Dr. Wilner. Have a safe and fun trip. Thank you, Spencer. Nice. Okay, talk to you soon.